so today we're going to continue what I, what the Holy Spirit put in my heart um, Sunday. Let's look at Romans, the third chapter. Romans, uh, excuse me, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. And so let's, uh, let's dig in the Word of God. Let's let the Lord minister to us during this time. But remember, we're not going to let the enemy bring condemnation. A lot of times the enemy will bring that. Uh, and so the Word of God is living and active. The Word of God is powerful. Come on, say amen. The Word of God is powerful and active. And so that's what we need. Our, our spirit man needs the Word. Our soulish, our emotions need the Word, especially now more than ever. And so we're going to look at this in, in, in Romans, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Romans 13, verse 11. Um, the Bible says this, and, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake. We live in a now, and so now is now. You're here now. You're in a now. You've come to a now, so the Lord is saying it's time for us to awake. Amen? Awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. So thank God that we believe in the Word of God. We believe in our salvation. The, the Lord is coming, and now is the time that it is closer than ever. Now, these are the times of, of trouble, of sorrow. As Jesus said, sorrow is coming. These are the times of sorrows. And so I would say yesterday's event was indeed another, another effect of sorrow that the enemy is stirred up. But the body of Christ continues pressing through. We keep praying, pray, 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 pray. Hallelujah. And keep standing on the word. But remember, faith is now. Let's look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And so we're going to see some things that the Holy Spirit is, is releasing to us in this hour. Today, as I was preparing, he gave me three scriptures. And oh, I'll tell you, I saw something that I never saw now that we're talking about in the now. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse um, 38. The Bible says, now the just shall live by faith. Now, say with me now. The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, uh, the fulfillment of what faith brings to that person. Now notice verse, chapter 11, verse 1, now faith. Kenneth Hagin says, faith is now. Paul Roberts says, faith of the now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. My now is faith now is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So, we, so always recognize that God operated in fear. He called in those things which were not as though they are. And so he operated in fear. I mean, in faith. Say with me, amen, faith. So faith is now. The unseen are made seen through the eye of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Sunday, we talked about how, how, jo how Joshua was in the now. Joshua was in the now. But now I want to show you in the book of Judges. Um, hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what. Go with me to Joshua. Excuse me, Joshua. I know I typed in Joshua, but my my speller came out with judges again. And so go with me to the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Say with me, amen. Notice what it says. Now, Joshua, verse 1. Uh, we're talking about uh, how Joshua, excuse me, Sunday I talked about how Samson was born. Right? He had a now. He was in the now. And what a wonderful opportunity for him to come into his now. Now we find in Judges, oh, excuse me, Joshua, <laughs> Joshua 13, 1. And you know what? It's quite interesting. You know why something happened here? Because Joshua 13, 1 and Judges 13, 1 are almost identical. Joshua uh, 13, 3 through 7 and Judges 3 through 7 is uh, almost identical. That's why when I got up here, to bring you judges, I wanted to go to Joshua. But my speller, my spell check full of the Holy Ghost led me to judges. 
And so, uh, really, if you look at it later on, you're going to find it's, it's both the now. Now, uh, Joshua 13.1, Now Joshua was old, stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. So this tells me that it doesn't matter what age you are. There is still work to be done. People say, well, I'm in retirement age and I think I'm slowing down. I'll never have what I wanted to. No, if you're a lover of God, God still has a plan for you, especially, especially in ministry, in the things of ministry. Now notice what it says. He says, there's much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth. <laughs> and then you find all the land that remaineth under the enemy's control. Now get a hold of that. Everything the Lord is given Joshua, it's in the enemy's hand. So that means God has a plan for Joshua. Folks, when God gives you a desire, it doesn't matter what the enemy says. God's still in control, and that's in your now. Now notice what he says, if you look in verses 3, from Sohor, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron, northward, which is counted to the Canaan, five lords of the Philistines and Gazites and Asherites and Escalonites and Jittites and all the Ike brothers and sisters, right? But notice this, that means he had a lot to do with. Now, being old, the Lord said, you're stricken in age, yes, but there's still work for you to be done. And there's enemies, especially those seven Ikes that are out there of the family, besides all the other Ikes. They drop down to verse 7 now. Now, therefore, divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half-tribes of Manasseh. Divide them. Divide them before they ever have them. Divide them before they ever have them. Divide them before you ever conquer them. That's going to be their now. So in other words, their now is to take what God has promised them. And that's what we are. We have to take... What God has promised us, we can say, well, one day, one day, one day will come and you'll still be where you are, are without anything. So you have to possess what God already gave you because the enemy is not giving it up. And I'm going to talk about that later on. So in other words, Joshua is in a now position because the Lord says, divide it to them today which is there now. So if you were part of the tribe that was with Joshua, you've got some land. And then he said this, now we've got to go get it, buddies. <laughs> we've got to go get it. Go sharpen your sword, we're going to get it. But you're not going to do the fighting, God's going to do the fight. but you've got to stand in front and see the Lord fight for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is now? Now, let me reiterate now. Now is a junction. It's, you're at a junction, a present time, an existing condition. Right now, you're in a now you're at a junction right now and in a present condition and an existing condition right now. Say with me, right now. right now. And so we talked about five things and really if you took count, we didn't finish the five things, right? Now, five things I told you about never be ashamed of your now. Jesus relates to you now. He's been there. Say with me, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Don't let your now affect your worship. When you come to the house of God, worship as though you have it. Amen. Don't come to worship and, and, and you know, if you're, if you're down and out and all of a sudden you come to worship the Lord, well, then I'm going to ask you, what's going on? Well, I just got a raise, Pastor. Well, you, 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 loving Christian, you should have praised God before that raise. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, that's, that's your now. Don't let it affect it. Be patient in your now. Remember I talked about the changes happening in the waiting room? Be patient. Patient is like a seed. It's going to take harvest, seed time harvest. You're going to have a greater now. Right? Then I talked about God is in charge of my now. God is in charge of your now, not the devil. Tell me, not the devil. The devil is not in charge of your now. He might whisper you and say, you'll never have it, you'll never get there, you'll never be able to do this, you'll never do that. No, 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 you say, no, no, you're not in my now. Because see, we have a sovereign God who is in my now. Say amen, amen. amen. We're trusting him. And listen to this, the devil isn't big enough to continue in my now. And the devil's not big enough to continue in my now. He's just a little squirt. He's a liar. He's a squirt. Folks, you know what? Um, today I was telling my wife, and she was, she was telling me about, 
you know, certain things that come on the news. And I said, honey, look, I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to do it in love. But I want to tell you because this is what the Lord's telling me. He said, don't listen to liars. Because that's what they're doing. They're lying. Well, pastor, they, they, yeah, no, 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 they're lying. Anything the enemy has is a lying spirit. And so if the morale of a, peop, of a, of a country is upside down, you're going to find liars. Come on, church, and you say, wow. So in other words, my now is working something for my good. Say that. My now, my now. is working something for my good. I, I tell you, your now, what you're hearing now is going to work for your now tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Your bad nows are turning for a better now. Understand that. Your bad nows, you may think you're in a bad situation right now, but understand something. God knows where you are now. The devil knows where you are now, and, and there's a fight right now. Who's going to, who's going to weak it up? Just like, just like Satan, just like God told Satan, don't touch Job. Don't touch him. He's going to worship me. Don't touch him. Don't take his life. So that's what, that's, and you know, the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Do you know when I looked that up in Hebrew, it really illustrates him standing before God and say, look, God, look at Pastor Robert. He's going to curse you because he's going to be in doubt. He knows you're about faith, but he's going to be in doubt. You see, that's what the devil does before the Lord day and night. But what does the Lord say? The Lord says, Holy Spirit, go forth and encourage and send and teach and angels cover them. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? And so those are the things that mine now is turning for the better. Can you say amen? amen? Now, understand something. Let's talk about Joseph. Go with me to Genesis, the 32nd chapter. This, this is Joseph. Oh, excuse me, Jacob. I'm going to get that right, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. So it's going to be Jacob, not Joseph, Jacob. All right? 32. Now, Jacob, you know the story of him. He was born holding the heel of his twin brother Esau. You remember that story in the Word of God? You got to study that. He, he was a twin of Esau. And really, Jacob means deceiver. <laughs> Supplanter. He cheated Esau um, two times. And one was the birthright and the blessing. You remember that? Study that story, how his father thought he was uh, Esau, and he gave it to Jacob. But notice this, later on we find he fled in his time of, of fear for his brother. His brother wanted to kill him for taking his birthright and the blessing. Chapter 32, now notice what it says here. Now, now to give you an illustration, uh, uh, Jacob leaves. And in verse 24 of chapter 32, um, say with me, amen. And Jacob was left alone. Now this is where he ran. He was worried. He was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of day. So get this picture. He left, and all of a sudden this, the Bible says it, it was a man that he wrestled all day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, Say me, amen. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And notice this, who's that him? There was an angel that came present with him, to him. And he said, let me go. I tell you, well, that's a grip on a spiritual being. Let me go. Folks, okay. I, I, ooh, Jesus, thank you. Let me go. The day breaketh, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hath thou power with God and with man, and hast prevailed. Now let's stop here. There was, a, there was a change that took place in Jacob not, not only was there a name change, but there was a positional authority change that affected the whole world to this day. Israel. Israel to this day. And that's our time clock right now, Israel. Jesus, God loves Israel. But notice this. He was touched by his now. 
He, he could have easily let go of that angel spirit or spiritual being, but he held on to him. This tells me something, ladies and gentlemen. How much do you want in what? How much do you want your now? Now notice this. I, I I've examined my life, and every time God has promised me something, I've had to get out and step in faith and walk in faith and see God work. Never did ever God do anything in my life when I sat and did nothing. Amen? So this reiterates that to a point that you have to get into the presence of God when you're in your now and you know that God give you a word. Get into it because the enemy knows your now and he's already been affecting your now. He's been hindering your now. He's been trying to cause a delay in your now, but you know your now by the word. Now it's time for you to get a hold of the things of God and lay hold of them. Lay hold of it like never before. I mean, Jacob was in a mess just like you and me may be sometimes. But his now came in the time of Esau change, following him. You know the story about that. Jacob made his mind, I need my blessing now. My twin brother's coming to kill me. I need my blessing now. See, he didn't know, but he knew that he got a blessing from his father and he got a birthright from his father, but he was on a good path. But he did a deceptive. So he knew he needed to repent. But yet God had a plan for him. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so much there, ladies and gentlemen. Now remember something. Don't let the devil bring you condemnation over something that you think you'll never have. If God says you can have it by the word, does it matter what your past was? God's forgiven you. God's uh, forgiven you. You're moving on with God and you're, you'll see God in your grave. You'll see God in your grave. Think about Moses. Moses killed a man, murdered a man, fled from, from Egypt. And he met God in his now. And he obeyed God. He could hardly talk. And God made it work for him. You see what I'm saying? There's so many stories in the Bible about situations like this. The devil can use those things against you, but you got to know your now. Amen. Uh, listen to this. Uh, in your now, you've got to be careful not to have a plan B because then you're not in faith. I hear too many Christians say, well, you know, if this, you know, if, if this, if, if, if this doesn't happen, then I know that I can rely on this because I know God will bless me with this. No, you're just out of faith now. You're, 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 you're assuming that that won't happen, but then God will bless this. No, God won't bless your plan B. He wants your A. Come on, church. Amen. Can you say amen? Uh, you know, you're going to have to go into the wrestling ring in your prayer. Get that now uh, in that wrestling ring and, and turn it around for the better. Jacob was saying, no, until I get my now. No, until I get my now. Don't go until I get my now. You've got to go before God and say, Father, your word declares this, and I reach for this in my life, and I declare it, Father, and I speak it. I declare it. Satan, you get your hands off it, and whatever you believe in God for, you start calling in, but get your feet or your boots on the road and get busy about looking for the plan of God and directing you so he can move you into that now. Come on, church. Amen. Stay with it until you get your now, until the now becomes a testimony, and then you start moving into the next now. Because there's always a now for God. Amen. Stay sold out to God's kingdom's way. Your now is going to change to a better now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is what the Lord spoke to me today. Go with me quickly to Matthew. Hallelujah. Are you guys good? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Matthew. This is Jesus right before he's going to the cross, uh, before, excuse me, before he gets arrested and, and the cross. But notice his position. Now he was, he, he was just a human just like you, a man just like you, had the same nature, never sinned but had the temptations. And you can't say that he was, he, yes, he was called of God, but he was not in his total glory. He was a man that just had the faith of God, the word of God. Matthew 26, notice what it says here. And then you can read the whole chapter, but I'm going to zero in on something. Verse 42, he went away again the second time to pray. Verse 41 says, watch and pray that thou enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O Father, if this cup may pass away for me, from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. He came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. No prayer, no power, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. He left them and went again and prayed this third time, saying the same words. Jesus was, was in torment right there. He was hurting. The Bible says, uh, literally, he was sorrowful. Verse 39, 38 says, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, and even unto death tarry ye and pray with me. This is a man that needed prayer. This is a man that needed his disciples to intercede with him. Right? He was feeling like sometimes the way you and I are when we, we're, we're, we face a situation that may be impossible. You have to get out of the impossible and get into the possible with God. The moment you start thinking it's impossible, you have to stop and say, no, all things are possible with God. Now notice what he says in verse 45. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, sleep now. Go ahead and continue sleeping. And take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. You know what he was saying? Yes, God's will was going to be manifested, but there had to be a place to the point of prayer with him so that they can get into the same spirit of him. Folks, the supply of the spirit is so important, church. The supply of the spirit is so important. Listen, when we come to pre-service prayer, three of us, two of us, whatever it be, four of us, that is powerful. But think about the, the additional supplies that can be there, how we can enter into a higher realm in that area. Because see, all of us are believing to pray, but Jesus needed his disciples to pray because he said, my now is coming and the enemy is trying to hinder that. Now understand what I'm saying. What happened when they arrested Jesus? One, one of the disciples cut an ear off a soldier. That could have turned seriously. There could have been a war, there could have been a fight, there could have been swords, there could have been many dead at that moment, including Jesus Christ. Now, Pastor, that's ridiculous. No, 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 Jesus said. He said, if you, you, go, if you want to die, you're going to die with a sword. He said that. Can you say amen? So in other words, in our now, understand that there's warfare in our now. You, you're praying, you're believing God for something, understand there's a warfare there because the enemy doesn't want to give, uh, to release the, the plan or the purpose or the direction that God has for you. He'll do everything he can by devils and demons and people to get you distracted into other things. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. There's people that are called into ministry and immediately the enemy comes and distracts them with a nice paying job. It happened to me. No, it didn't happen. It was, it tried to happen to me. The day, and let me make a correction. Pastor Christine reminded me, you have to make a correction. I said, let, let me do it right now. Let me make a correction. When I, was called into, when I was called to Bible school, I received my pastoral authority, my gifting. I received it. I said, Father, I recognize that you called me to be a pastor. I received it. But then I, I, was, then I got into business because I was in Bible school. Now, uh, let me take it. Let me get it right. It was in, in, in my pastoral position that when I received my pastoral position at a local church to become called to be pastor in that church, then the enemy came to distract me to go to Minnesota. And I said I did it in Bible school. No, in Bible school, I was in Bible school learning. Thank God for my wife, she reminded me. I was in Bible school learning. I gave my business away. My brother helped me through Bible school financially. So when I graduated from Bible school, I went to a church to work. And from that moment on, after years of working there, then I was moving into a pastoral position in that church. And that's when that job position came. Trying to pull me from becoming a pastor. Amen? So in other words, Jesus knew you've got to, you've got to pray in your now. Because your now is going to affect you. Prayer is going to affect your now. Because tomorrow you're going to be in another now. And this is really where I'm talking about. Your now is right now. You come to a point in life that you're in your now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me give you another illustration. I love this story. The Lord ministered this to me when I was in, going into ministry. Go with me to 1 Kings now. Now, this is going to help you understand something about there should be no plan B. 1 Corinthians, 1 
1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Now here we have a, 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 a protege that's becoming the next prophet. And this was e Elisha. Notice what it says in Kings, uh, 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verse 21. Uh, listen to what it says here. Um, well, let's look at verse, um, oh gosh, verse 19. All right, right. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Sophet, who was plowing, Elijah, excuse me. Elijah found Elisha, uh, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he, and with the 12, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now, that's, there's his now. The mantle was cast upon him. But notice how many yoke of oxen he had. Twelve. Very rich man. Very rich man. Twelve yoke. In those days, if you had twelve, my goodness, you were plowing a big field. If you had one, you were doing pretty good. But twelve, that's a, that's a big, big tractor pull. Amen. So Elijah passed by, and he left the oxen, Oh, excuse me, and, and, uh, 12 oxen, and he was with the 12, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him, and he left the oxen. Elisha left the, uh, Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done unto thee? In other words, you don't want your now. Go on. You just, you, you just don't recognize you're in a now. And then he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. You know what he did? He burnt his bridge. He burnt his point B. He said, let me go kill this oxen and let me go burn these, this, this, this plow and let me feed all the workers I'm, and I'm after the man of God and then the Bible said for 13 years he followed Elijah for 13 years and the Bible says he was his servant get a hold of this whenever Elijah ate Middle Eastern the way they eat with their hands they, don't, they didn't use uh, towels like you and I do they turn around for the servant to wash their hands so he was the hand washer of Elijah beautiful story right no, no plan B they're totally sold out what am I saying? In your now, don't get into a plan B. Stay with your now and say, no, Father, I thank you, my now. My now is this. My now is this. My now is this. Don't try to uh, make your now in, uh, from the B and profess your now is the A. Don't do that. Do you get that? God gave you a now, but you're going to go get a B and say, this is what God said? No, no, you're just lying, and it's a fake. Too many people look that way. Too many people. Well, pastor, uh, you know, I feel, pastor, God called me into this church, and I'm going to go pastor it. Uh, and, oh, uh, yeah, okay. A year later, well, I didn't stay at that church because this church called me, and they had more people, more money. You just, you just messed up out of your A. Amen? So you had to be totally sold out, right? Now, now notice this. Notice this. Something so beautiful here. Remember the anointing that Elijah had later on, you find that mantle fell on Elisha. But the mantle fell on him, but his now was when the mantle fell on his shoulder. Now, now understand what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yes, today, Pastor Christina uh, are enjoying what we've had in the now years ago, but we're believing for our now, now, in something nice, now, now. Come on, church. And so that means that what God gave us then was a now. But that now is anointed me to understand my now now. If you never experience a now then, you've got to experience it before you get into the now now. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, where you are now, call it in, speak it, declare it, be, go after it, hold on to it. Go to God and pray, intercede, rebuke the devils that are trying to hinder you from that now. Remember, he's making a diamond out of your now. Go study how they make diamonds. A diamond, when it's first pulled out of the mine, it's a black rock. It doesn't look like a diamond. You may see a little glistening of it. But really, a diamond, how it's purified, is under the fire. The same way gold, gold, 
the way to remove the things from the gold, the, the dross, under fire. Silver, the same way. The same way it is in, in your now. When you, God has given you something so good in your now, you've got to take it. But remember something, you may not see it so precious because you're after it, you're after it, you're after it, you're, you're fighting for it. But remember, that fight is that furnace. That fight is that furnace. Come on, church, amen. In other words, the costly uh, is coming out, not the fake, not the cheap thing. Not, not the cubic zircona where people say, well, I got a diamond. Are you fake? That's not a diamond. That's a, that's a fake diamond. Amen? Now, I have a, I have a ring that has uh, a, a, that type of stone. But you know why I have that? Because it's pretty. I like it. And every time I wear it, I say, Lord, I thank you that my diamonds are coming to replace those stones there. Amen? And so it's amazing. When, I, when we first got married, when we got married, Pastor Christine gave me a beautiful ring, a wedding ring. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. So beautiful, so beautiful. And um, they broke in our house and stole all our jewelry. And that one was stolen. And, but I'll never forget it because it just glistened. It, it just so beautiful. Well, now I got me just this one because I use it for everything. You know, this one here is just, this, this kind of ring you use for anything. You can change oil. You can, you can skin a deer. You can, you can, you can wash clothes, you, whatever. You can, you can make mud cakes, whatever, you know. But I have some really nice rings that I put up. And every one of those rings, God has used someone to bless me with them. Amen. But I'm still believing God for my ring that's going to have diamonds all around my finger. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm not, I'm not going to go after it like, like, like an idol. I'm just believing God. Amen. He's going to give it to me. Amen. Remember, he's making a diamond out of your now. Amen. Can you say amen? Now, I want you to see something. Go with me. And we're going to look at something. Go with me to Romans, the eighth chapter. And then let's get ready to pray. Um, I believe we understand what the Lord is saying right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Now, now get, get serious about it. Take communion over what you're believing God for. Lay it before him. Um, get you some scripture. Write it down. Make a declaration. This day I make a declaration in such and such time. I took communion before the Lord and I'm receiving my now. Now, you may not understand fully the now, what you're believing God for the now, but you know where you're at, what you're asking God for. Ask him to reveal to you more of that which you're believing in your now. Like this church when God started showing me. He started showing me uh, Deuteronomy 11.11. And, and I started saying, thank you, Father, we have a beautiful building. I, I didn't see the building, but I said, thank you, Father. We're believe we had prayed about it. We took a, anoint, we took communion, and we confessed it, and we thanked God for it. And finally, somebody asked me, so how does the church look? And I kind of had to say, I don't know. I just know it's a beautiful church. Well, it's a beautiful church. Finally, I asked the Lord, Lord, I need some more revelation of that beautiful church. And then all of a sudden, I saw this, these walls outside. And I said, okay, I know them. So when I drove up to this place, I already knew that was our building. When there was a church in there, I didn't know they were going through a time where they needed to close it down. I didn't know, but the Holy Ghost. Now, what made the, like Pastor Christine said today, we were looking for churches in Edmond. We had looked already at two churches in Edmond and another one that we thought about moving into. And it was a nice church. We were believing God for that, but we asked the Lord. And that's when things started happening. Lord, give me a, a, a direction. And one day, we're just going to visit my daughter and we happened to drive down this road, and, and there was a church pulled in the driveway. And I said, I want to do something that I know the Lord wants to do. I prayed on this corner right here. I put my hands on this corner, both corners, and I confessed this church being ours. And then everything just started falling into place. Everything to the point that we moved in on Palm. We, we had our first service Palm Sunday. Why? Because, see, we experienced a now. And I lay hold on it, and you heard it. For you that didn't hear, I would always say, we have a beautiful church. I said it for... People that were not here. In fact, um, let me just say something for you that don't know. Do you know that there were a pretty good, a pretty good group of people that were with us when they heard Deuteronomy 11, 11? But when they found out we're moving to a church, they just scattered. Now, how did, why would that happen? That means there's an intention that the devil didn't want for them to be part of something. Because... You know, they were givers, tithers, uh, you know, but 
when we left, we were left with, God, there's no plan B. We got a plan A still. There's a God that's going to give us the church. And we believed every dollar came in for this church. You were part of it, and God saw it, saw, saw that we were dil diligent in prayer. And I would say, we've got a, Devon, didn't you hear me say that for a couple of years? We've got a beautiful place. Teresa, many years. We've got a beautiful place, a beautiful place. God has given us a beautiful place. Thank God that we've got a beautiful place. I confess it. Why? Because my prayer time was serious about the building. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in, in Romans, the eighth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I bless, well, I don't bless them. I forgive those that left. Let, you know, go on. Be happy. Amen. But I believe you left premature. In Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 28. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, and we know, are you there? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, say we, all things. Say it again, all things. all things. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Now underline or circle that His purpose. It's got to be, it's got to be His, His purpose in your life. So in other words, when you believe in God for your now, or for, or that you're in your now, and you're going to see your now, it's got to be purpose-minded. Amen? One person came to the altar years ago. Pastor, I pray that the Lord blesses me on the, on the, uh, on the lottery. I almost want to laugh. I said, well, excuse me? A lottery. I said, no, 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 no. Because somebody's losing. I'm going to bless you. In fact, at $20, you're going to pay for that lottery ticket, put it in the offering. You've got, you got a 100 chance of receiving a return than that lottery. Amen. He didn't like it. Amen. And we know, listen to what it says in the Young Literary Translation. And we know that to those loving God, say with me, that's me, all things do work together for good. All things. They work together for good. Get God involved in, in your believing for your now, and it'll be good. To those who are called according to his purpose. See, purpose. God, see, the word of God gives us all things. There's a scripture that I would put on our door when I would, our children go out the front door until that door got swollen. They couldn't open it. <laughs> the rain swelled it. In Texas, there was a lot of humidity. You thought we had humidity? Uh-uh. 100% humidity out there. And so the doors would swell after a day like this raining. Doors would swell. <clears throat> and so our door swelled so much. But there was a sticker that says, for God has given me all things that pertain to God. For, for he has given me all things that pertain to God. All things. Given me all things. All things that pertain to God. And I said, Father, thank you that you've given me all things. All things. All things. All things. You've given me all things that belong to you. Thank you, Lord. All things. All things. And you know, um, it was a long. That door that I couldn't open, around the door, someone left a check. And I'm correct. $3,000. I... Sometimes I get numbers mixed because there's so many times people give us so much different money, so I get them all mixed up. But I remember that, and somebody left an alarm clock there. I don't know if Teresa remembers that, but there was an alarm clock left. And so I'm wondering, what does the alarm clock have to do with that check? It was a cashier's check. In fact, the cashier's check was already dry. It had wrinkled up. It got rained, so I could see it was all like wrinkled up, wet. And it's a cashier check, and I cashed it that day. They took it wet or dry, all uh, uh, you know, wrinkled. But the alarm clock, Pastor Christine and I said, okay, what does the alarm clock mean, Lord? Somebody left it there, might have, <laughs> and set it at a certain time. I don't know. But to me, that was my now. It was my now. And I don't remember where the, the, the alarm clock was set. I don't remember. I'm just too excited about that check and the alarm clock. <laughs> I don't even know what happened to the alarm clock. But the thing about it, that was by now because I was confessing that scripture in that front door, which I couldn't use, and it turned out to be that very day get going to check the mail. I saw that there after the rains. So that was my now. See, there's nows, but you've got to believe you have a now, a now, a now, a now. And right now, you're here, here in this now. So that means you're getting ready for a now. So you have to start getting into your now by confessing that we're believing God. 
and getting on that prayer confession. Come on, church, getting on that confession. Confess that word. Speak that word. Declare that word. Hallelujah. Pastor Christine reminded me. I, she heard my sermon, I think it was yesterday or this morning. It was yesterday. Uh, anyway, anyway, she heard it. But anyway, uh, she said, do you, you should have said the testimony of your truck. And I said, yeah, man, that was a my now. I said, Lord, I want a truck. And she said, what kind of truck you want? Any kind of truck. She said, no, you got to know what you want. I said, okay, I want this kind. And that truck that you see that I drive is the exact truck of a picture that I put on my refrigerator. The exact truck. Laid hands in it, confessed it. And every time I go into that refrigerator, it was like maybe five times a day, <laughs> I'd confess that scripture. I'd say, thank you, Father, for my beautiful truck. I, I'm driving it and I'm using it for your purpose. And I use it for the church. For your purpose and for family that need to use it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. But what did I do? I just didn't sit there till the truck came out driving. I got on the internet, started looking for that type of truck. And I looked at all the trucks. I said, Ooh, thank you, God. $40,000. Oh, thank you, God. $30,000. $38,000. Oh, thank you, God. I got my truck. Got my truck. And all of a sudden, boom. I said, Whoa, 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 whoa. 25, 24, $5,000. Okay. Mm -mm. So I said, Lord, is this it, Lord? Called Christine and said, honey, is, you got to pray, is this it? And she said, well, if, if, if it's it, it'll be there. Because trucks were selling fast. And so one Saturday, we saw it on a Monday or a Sunday, and then one Saturday we went, and there was a young boy, a salesman, a car salesman, just waiting for a, a person to come. And this truck was not in the a new car Part, it was in the used part, in the back, way in the back. Now, that's another sign, way in the back. God was protecting that truck. And so this guy was walking around, and he saw me driving, and he said, hey. So he wanted to get me off the street. He said, oh, all right, y'all here for that truck, right? I never told anybody on the Internet. Never told anybody on the Internet. So when he said that, it was a confirmation. He took me to the back. I looked at it, drove. He said, let's take it for a drive. You go, you and your wife go. Oh, and I said, it's brand new. He said, yeah, only 3,000 miles on it. A lady bought it in Texas, drove it to Oklahoma City. And when she drove it to Oklahoma City, she didn't like it. She wanted a Ram. So that's why we have it in our, in our Dodge dealer in the used section. But it's actually brand new, 3,000 miles. And I said, how much you want for it? And they offered I never, never, never haggled a price because I've learned from my spiritual father, don't haggle a price when you believe in God for something. Amen. So I said, well, well, how much is it? He said, okay, all right. Uh, he said, you can have it right now, yeah, but you got anything to tr trade it? And I said, no, I don't want to trade my car, but, but I, do have a, I do have some money. He said, well, let's go talk business. And here in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, my credit. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to talk about that. And guess what? I went in there. I didn't even have to haggle him. And the, the manager came in and said, you want that truck? He said, they dropped it even more. Yeah. Right? He said, you got a down payment? I said, I sure do. Let's go into your credit. And, and all of a sudden, the bank, the bank that we bank, it's a teacher's credit union. Other banks, they ran it. And it couldn't, you know, like, you know, um, their, their finance companies wouldn't take it. But they ended up saying, I, he said, what bank do you do? Uh, the, the credit union, teacher's credit union. And he said, oh, our, our company works with it. Let's put it in. Boom, I stepped it, got the truck, and I drove it out of there. Didn't even, didn't even know what the buttons were. I drove it out of there. <laughs> now, you want to hear the, better, the good side of it? It's paid off. Totally paid off. God did a miracle and paid that truck off. And it's still the most beautiful truck. People talk about all. They ask me, well, where'd you get that truck? It's expensive. I said, God. <laughs> you know, God gave him a truck. <laughs> hey, man, let's go ahead and stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because, see, it was my now. I had to get in that now. It was my now. Hallelujah. Amen. The mantle came at that moment. But you've got to step into it. You've got to know that you know that you know. You've got to stand on that word, but you've got you to go and pray. Oh, we prayed. Prayed, prayed, prayed for that truck. Prayed, 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 and believed God for it. Because I was tired of bothering, uh, 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 using my son's truck, using a, a member of the church's truck, or, or a member of the church. He had a truck, and I, I said, Lord, the church, we need one. And now the church, we can use it for the church. I use it for the church all the time. I bring stuff, my tools, and work on this church. Amen. Father, we come to you. 
now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we have heard the word of the Lord. We receive the word that it is not changed. It will never change. It's solid. It's true. It's full of power and authority. And Jesus, you taught us not to sleep in our now. You taught us to recognize our now. Like Elisha recognized that now when that mantle hit his shoulder and the enemy tried to bring his family to bury his family, to say bye to his family. There was no plan B. He went ahead and burnt his tools, never came back to that ranch to work with those oxen, but did the work of the Lord in his now. And there were so many nows that many people experienced because of you, Father. And Lord, I thank you that we're in our now and we believe in our now. And we believe, Father, Lord, we, all of us here have purpose, have a direction, have a desire, have a promise, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that we pull it in like Jacob did not give up on his now. He said, I will not let you go till you bless me. And that very moment, the angel gave him a change of authority and name, Israel, to this day. The father, the father that was, that was given the name Israel. We thank you, Father. So we take what belongs to us in this word. We will not let the devil water this word down, change this word, or say, well, uh, maybe. No, we know. It's our now. And we give you praise, Father. We thank you, Lord. We honor you, Father. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. We thank you, Father. Oh, Rabba Shanda Rabakata. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. The peace of God so, so surpass all understanding. So there's peace involved in his now. There's never haste in his now. There's never doubt in his now. There's always peace in the word. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, all the things that are come to hinder our now, that we rely on that peace, that inner, inner most satisfying peace of God, the tranquil move of the Holy Ghost in us. And we thank you, Father. We declare it, Father, and we speak it, Father, and we give you praise tonight in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful, mighty name. Say with me, amen, and amen, and amen, and amen.